So last podcast, I mentioned that I wanted to talk, I wanted to finish Dark Souls 3 before I talked about it. I have not finished Dark Souls 3. In fact, I have dropped the game. <laughs> and I'd like to explain why. Um, so I have some complicated feelings on Dark Souls at this point in time. Uh, I for for I might be referring to Dark Souls and just say that without saying Dark Souls three in the future, like during this segment. Uh, just know that I am talking about three. That is my entire frame of reference. Someone in the comments is going to say, "Well, this one's a little different. This one, this well, well, that's this thing might be a little different in this game." I'm sure. Feel free to leave that, but um, don't just know that like I am. <laughs> if I say Dark Souls, I'm talking about three. Also, I don't think, I don't know if many of my complaints would be that different. I don't know if it would really change depending on the game that I was playing, on, on which one I was playing. Uh, okay, so I guess I can start off with what the reason that I dropped the game and why I kind of doubt I'll be playing another Souls game in the future, or at least one in the series. Maybe there's like a, you know a Souls-like that will, will really get me. <coughs> so, my primary problem with uh, Dark Souls 3 is that it's about 20 hours too long. At least, at least, how much time did I have into it? When, uh, the last time that I played it. Uh, 43.6 hours. Yeah, I would say it's about 15 to 20, maybe even 25 hours too long for me. Uh, it is too long for how shallow the moment-to-moment -moment gameplay is for me. For how long, the, for how shallow the combat is to me. So here's what I mean. And this is very much a thing where I am a certain kind of player, and I like certain kinds of games, Right? Um, this is also why the length of the game is important. So, uh, at some point I was playing Diz 3 and I realized that, okay, so, so the game for me really peaked with, um, at, what is it, Irithyll, I think, and, and Pontiff Sullivan. And after that, it was kind of a slow slide into realizing that I wasn't enjoying the game anymore. And... It really sucked. It was really, it was really, really miserable. And it took me a while and it took me a lot of thinking to realize why I felt like that. Um, and I realized that, so I would, I had this, this awful situation where I was continuing to play the game. I would win. I would like beat a boss and I didn't feel good. I just felt like relieved that it was over with. And when I died or I had to lose or there was another big ass area that I had to go through, I just kind of groaned. I just felt frustrated that I had to keep playing the game. And I realized that I was really bored. I realized that I was feeling bored with what I was doing and I kind of wanted it to be over. It was that feeling of being at school or being at like a job and you really don't want to be there. You just want to you just want to you just want the day to get by without without any big event happening and you want to go so that you can go home sooner and not have to spend energy uh and then something happens and you're like oh fuck i gotta deal with it like why is this more difficult than it has to be <laughs> that was what i felt the moment that the bubble popped for me was when i walked into what is it called uh, it's whatever area that Oseros is in, the Fallen King or whatever, Oseros, Osiros, I don't know. That guy, the dragon fellow with the, or the wyvern guy, I don't know what he is. Um, I walked in there and I had a, I had a page up of what are the optional and mandatory bosses just because I, I wanted to know. Like how I, uh, I, it was a list of the bosses because I wanted to know how far along I was in the game. Uh, and maybe like where I needed to head next. Cause I, I, there was like one or two moments where I wasn't exactly, I couldn't quite remember where I had to go next. So I had that up and I realized I go, I walk in, I'm like, oh, there's a, there's a boss. And then I go and check 
And I, I die to him. My souls are in the boss room. And I'm like, oh, I feel like I need to... Okay, I have to I have to go fight him now. I find out that he's... I check the list and I find out that he's optional. And I'm like, okay, well, you know, my souls are in there. And I tried him. I spent like 20 minutes or something. And a lot of that was just getting from the bonfire to his boss room. Because there's a fucking like poison swamp and you have to wait for enemies it's just it's just a it's just a pain in the ass to get to him and one time i just i died to him before i picked up my souls and i lost them and i was like fuck it i'm not trying anymore and i i that it was that moment that i realized that okay i don't hate this game but i'm not enjoying it enough to want to i'm not enjoying it enough to do anything that's not required of me. I'm quiet quitting Dark Souls 3. So I really had to interrogate how I felt about it for for a while. And here's what I here's what I came to. I meant I said this earlier, but to go into more detail about it. Uh the combat of Dark Souls is too the specific like way that you play them is too simple and linear to interest me for long periods of time. So what I mean by that is um, you're basically using one weapon, right? So if you think about, like, a combat system to me is there's the, the components of a combat system are what are the options the player has available to them? What are the cha the specific challenges, like the enemies that they have to face? And uh, sometimes, you know, this is a little, might be different depending on the kind of game. What is the uh, environment that they are fighting them in? Like, what is the level geometry, basically? A uh, level geometry, I would say, isn't super, super duper important in Dark Souls. So, for, like, an individual combat encounter. Like, it, it's there sometimes, but it's not a huge deal. Uh, it's mostly, like, player... What are the What's the player's abilities and what are the, what are the enemies? And... In a single combat encounter, the player is basically using like one weapon. You've got you've got one weapon, and someone someone might say like, so you're using like one weapon, and then the enemies themselves. There's a decent amount of variety across the entire game, but I find that a large majority of the enemies fit into basically a fodder tier, where they'll throw like two or three of them at you. And they're not, like, that difficult to fight on their own. Um, you just have to kind of pay attention to make sure that you don't get caught off guard by any of them. Sometimes you have to drag one out. Sometimes, you know, to, to fight them one-on-one. -on -one. Uh, but most of them are just, like, block one hit or dodge one attack from them and then hit them two or three times and they die. And no real, no real challenge to it. Then there's the kind of slightly more elite enemies who actually require a little bit of dodging and timing uh and those guys you do have to put like in a little bit of effort and and those were more interesting to fight definitely i, I think the game is probably at its best in fights like that in the much more um uh fights where one-on-one uh, -on -one where you have to pay a lot more attention to what the opponent is doing i think those are were a lot more interesting to me uh and then there is, uh, uh, I don't know, there, there's like there's like a couple of, those are like the two main kinds of th levels of enemies you'll be fighting. And they'll sometimes be mixed, uh, like a, a, a more complex one will be supported by some kind of like fodder ones uh, who are just kind of kept meant to make you move around and stuff. But for the most part, they don't change that much in terms of function. They'll have different attacks, they might have different, slightly different patterns, but you're kind of i found that i was really fighting them most enemies in the game in the exact same way with the exact same tool the one it's very small set of tools your movement stuff and the one weapon that you're using you might say oh but there's like a thousand weapons in the game it's, yeah but you're only using one you're only using what you're not switching between weapons um within a single combat scenario, you're just using the one. And for long stretches of time, you're probably just using the same weapon, right? Like, even if you decide that you're going to use a variety of them, you're probably just gonna use one for like a couple hours. Um, and for me, that 
has a limited shelf life. It can only be interesting for so long. And I think once I kind of wrapped my head around the combat, I realized Dark Souls is not really a difficult game. It's not a super hard game, but you die a lot because it it's like it it's more of a game about endurance than it is like mechanical mastery. And that's where I, I lose interest in it. Because every fight is kind of like a Rubik's Cube. Some of the fights are more jumbled up Rubik's Cubes. But they're all Rubik's Cubes. And there is a system to figuring out a Rubik's Cube. Right? Like, you, can, I don't know it. But I know that there is one. And, and, and you can take, like, a regular, you know, 3x3x3 three by three by three, uh, cube... And there is a pattern that you can do, which will just eventually sort sort it out. And that's how all of the fights felt after a certain point, where it was just a cube that I was figuring out. And then after I figured it out, the fight became less interesting because I just had to, like, I just had to be patient. I had a pretty well-upgraded weapon. My stats were, I was, like, a decent level. I even checked with other people, like, online. Like, uh, I sent it to some people in a Discord server to make sure, like, okay, is my build, like, completely fucked? And they're like, uh, it's, like, ob it's not optimal. Like, obviously, it's, it's not optimal. I was just kind of winging it. I had a basic understanding of what the stats did, but I didn't have any build in mind. I was just, I was just using, um, I used the weapon that I liked. I used the gear that gave me the best stats while keeping me under the, uh, the weight limit for fat rolling. Uh, and I kind of just invested a lot into like, you know, stuff like strength, health, uh, my stamina, uh, yeah, that was like the main, that was the, you know, the main things that I, that I invested into, <laughs> which I feel like is the game is definitely designed to be beatable like that. Like this is not a game where you have to be like 100%, 150% optimal to, to, to win or to beat, to complete the thing. Uh, probably makes it easier, but, like, I don't need to. Uh, <clears throat> that also meant that I wasn't really engaging with the gearing system very much. Uh, so what I'm trying to say is that I, I had, like... I didn't completely fuck up my build or anything. Uh, I would go through these boss fights, and it was basically just a matter of patience. Like, I was doing enough damage to them... That as long as I just, like, I know basically how to, I can figure out within, like, a couple, of, like, maybe five runs of the fight, I can see 90% of what the boss is going to do, at least in, like, one phase, right? Um, it, It's not too difficult to figure out how to dodge stuff. I know how to dodge everything. It's just like, oh, fuck, I got hit by that oh i got nicked by that and then what got frustrating as i got further and further into the game is it felt like the bosses just their damage got cranked up so high that like i could basically only take like i could get me i could maybe like fuck up a roll one time and then get hit by something that took me down to like 70 percent health and then they would always have like one attack that did like 80 percent of my health and just killed me instantly I was like, great, awesome, oh, great. It was just very, yeah, I don't know, punishing, I guess. And there was just a certain point where it just got really old for me. And I was like, it's just exhausting. And it's not fun. It's not interesting. I don't feel like I'm making any interesting decisions in these combat scenarios. I'm just going through the motions until one time I just happen to be patient enough and I get a good cycle, and it just kind of works out. So I would beat these bosses, and I was like, I'd be like, that wasn't hard. It wasn't hard. <laughs> Every single boss in this game, I felt, I was like, it's really not that hard, you know? It's not that hard. It's just the way that they act, the way that they're designed, uh, the fact that you can't always you don't know the exact sequence of moves that they're going to do they tend to have a bunch of different moves you get you get fucking mental stacked by them sometimes where you just i'm like when the fuck when did you have that one what the hell that kind of thing and if you just do the fight enough times and you know how it works and you know all the patterns and shit which isn't that hard to learn and learn how to avoid them or that you can block something 
it just kind of it'll just work out eventually. The problem is just it gets more and more of an endurance match the longer the game goes on. Uh, and I was just bored. I I prefer games. I think a lot of my favorite games are the ones which give the player a large, like a varied amount of options to make in any given scenario, right? Like I've talked about it before a hundred times, but I love blood. And one of the reasons that I love blood is that just like the TNT in that game, it's like gotta be one of my favorite weapons in any shooter ever because the TNT by itself, just that, makes you look at every single room in the game differently. It it completely alters your strategy for how you approach every single situation because it turns every single wall, every single surface, every corner into like a potential attack vector. Uh, and then it's, it's like probably the, the craziest example, but every weapon in that game has multiple different functions and... You know, you'll you'll go into a room and it, it's just a slaughter room, right? And you're like, okay, I'm going to figure out a game plan. I'm going to like go in. I'm going to toss the dynamite here. Uh, I'm going to, uh, I'm going to switch to like the Tommy gun. I'm going to like stun this guy, uh, like stun lock him to death. And I'm going to round the corner and I'm going to switch to the shotgun. I'm going to like get two blasts to kill these guys. I'm going to jump over. Like you can come up with like a whole game plan. And depending on, you know, the person, you can approach the same combat situation in a com two completely different ways. And that is so cool to me that you can play it in, in totally different ways, depending on what you like, you know, how, what kind of strategy do you think up? That's a very like mentally, like intellectually stimulating game for me, uh, where the player, is, not only are the enemies extremely varied and the enemies all force you to behave in a different way. Uh, force you to move around. They control space in different ways. Uh, you also have a ton of different options to approach them and how to handle them. Uh, that's super cool. And that's something that Dark Souls, uh, just it's just not designed like that. It's just not designed like that. And you know what? <clears throat> I've been focusing on the negative, but this is only a complaint that I had after like 20, 25 hours, right? Like, most of the game, or I'd say at least the first half of the game, I was having a decent time. I don't know if I was having a great time, uh, but I was having a decent time. I could say that I, I was enjoying it well enough, like a 6, 7 out of 10 experience. It's only after the game drags on and on and on on that I really started to feel the effects of how I wasn't I didn't feel like I was getting any better or like I was changing anything anything was changing about it it was it was like it, it got very repetitive like the game had kind of run out of it, it had run out of things to say and it was just going on for no real reason uh and that that was very that was very f frustrating that was where that like downward slump really hit me because I, I I kind of forced myself I felt like I was forcing myself to to play through a game long after I otherwise would have dropped it and I was like why am I doing that and what I what I realized was I was kind of doing it out of some form of ego I suppose um definitely part of it was me thinking I hate the idea that I'm going to say that I don't really gel with Dark Souls and someone's going to say, you didn't even beat the game. And then I would have to say, and then for the rest of my life, I was going to have to say, no, well, I got up to Lorien and I dropped the game. I feel like, I feel like that's enough for my, my, I feel like that's enough, like for my criticisms to hold weight uh to get through like 90 95 99 of the game before dropping it and the idea of having that argument for the rest of my life uh made, made like made me sick to my stomach <laughs> so i was pressing on and i was just throwing myself at this fucking boss for like five hours and just having a miserable time i was fucking 
I just hated it. I felt like I was wasting my life. And I play video games every day. And I may, I felt like I was wasting my life <laughs> playing that. And I figured, okay, honestly, fuck it. At this point, if I get up to the penultimate boss, I, and it, it helped for that I did like a lot of thinking on why I was feeling the way I was. Because I was, I, I, I was, okay. I don't think beating, because it's the penultimate boss. I genuinely don't think that beating this guy and then the final boss is going to change my opinion on the game at all. I don't think it's going to turn me around in any way. Uh, I doubt anything's going to change because my opinion is on... I don't know. I, I just don't see any way that it could it could it could recontextualize things. Um. So, yeah, I just dropped it. I'm like, I'm having a miserable time. I just want to play something else that I'm going to like more. Because I would finish a session and I would just feel like shit. I would be so fucking. I would be in such a bad mood after playing it that I would. I just, I had to do something else before I went to sleep, to like reset my mood <laughs> so i just dropped it i just figured i'd drop it i think it's just a style that is i can certainly stomach and i can even enjoy parts of it but for the length that it goes on it is well beyond the point where i feel like it's it's it i don't think it justifies its length not to me at least and again this is a very me thing there are people who love these games and stuff like that doesn't bother them. You know, the, the way the combat is laid out doesn't bother them. And that is as that is fine. That is perfectly valid. Uh, uh, this is just a thing that is specific to, way that, to the way that I play games, to what I like about games. And you know what? I can, I'll talk about some things that I, I liked about the game because there are things that I do like about the game. Um, Irithyll... I hope I'm pronouncing that right. I, I can't remember how it's spelled. Every, every fucking place in this game is called something like uh, Londithical, the uh, f the fucky tower. Every, every place is named like that. Irithyll is like one of the most beautiful environments I've ever seen in a video game. Like I got out of the go those goddamn caves and onto the cliffside overlooking it, like the bridge... And the castle town, and I, I was just, I was in awe. I thought it was breathtaking. It's one of those beautiful vistas I've ever seen in a game. I'm, I'm not, I'm totally serious. The art direction, especially for that area, is outstanding. I think it's my favorite area in the game. I love the way that it looks. I'm a huge sucker for snowy gothic castle towns. I love Curthus from FF14. I, I just adore stuff like that that cold color palette with the night sky and all the stars the big lake um just just breathtaking great looking location um i i just i i just liked exploring it it's got i think it has my favorite room in the game it has there's like this moment where you go down into the basement and um there's these enemies who they're like these invisible kind of shadow people but all you can see of them is that they're little like white eyes they just got these white circular eyes these beady eyes and that's all you can see in the darkness and i would like i just i pulled out my torch and i'm walking down the steps and i see all these little eyes kind of like darting around and then as i'm walking down the steps i just see like a cut like a three or four of them just slowly kind of sweeping up the stairs towards me these like barely visible shadows with white eyes and it it was just it was so cool it it reminded me of something like out of tolkien and when i say tolkien i mean i mean like you know fantasy as we know it today didn't as a genre it didn't really exist like tolkien invented it practically basically with lord of the rings and you know in that context when you it, when that came out when the lord of the rings came out for the first time that was like the first 
exposure of so many people to imagery and 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 ideas like this that was so so out there right and this reminded me of something like that something so original and memorable like it it felt like straight out of a book like that with where something that had no basis in something else it was so original feeling and the visual and the the atmosphere it, it just oh my god like one of the coolest just this little there's this little basement room that takes you like maybe 30 seconds to get through god what a great what a great moment um I I thought that boss Pontiff Sullivan was very it was more interesting to fight just because I felt like um so part of it was uh, I got to flex a little bit of my musical know-how because his attack patterns are in a waltz they're in a waltz time time signature so I remember hearing I was really struggling to figure out uh how to fight him like, because his, his movements were so strange and they just seemed like his attacks just came out of nowhere. It would just be nothing and then whoosh, super fast. So I I remember hearing a friend years ago tell me that, like, Dark Souls 3, like, some of the bosses have, like, uh, someone found out that they, they attack based on, like, a, a specific, like, time signature. Like a 3-4 beat. And I remember, and I looked it up and, yes, he is one of the bosses, one of the two bosses who does that. And I went into the boss room and I just counted one, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three, because it, it's it's roughly the same BPM as the as uh, the boss theme, which I think is very very clever. And yeah, basically all of his attacks, as soon as he starts the animation, all of his attacks are either on the three beat or uh, like six beat. So one, two, three, then he attacks, or like one, two, three. And, or one, two, three, one, two, three. Like that's all of his attacks, mostly. Uh, and then he like splits himself into two, and I you have to focus on like uh killing the clone to make him easier. And very cool boss. I felt great. I I felt really good when I beat him. When I say the game peaked, like I think like that was the fight where I had that moment, and if you've never played a kind of a really difficult, challenging game like that. I had this moment. The, I've only ever gotten it with when I that one time that I beat Toho Six. The only time I've beaten a Toho game, where I'm so I'm really focused, and I'm I'm not breathing very fast. I'm like breathing really slowly, and I'm I've got like some adrenaline going, and my whole body is tensed up. Just just watching, right? Just focusing. And then the moment, and you're like that for minutes on end. And then the moment that you win, the moment you beat them, you're just, oh, and like every muscle in your body relaxes and you feel like that kind of like afterglow of adrenaline <laughs> through your veins. And it's like, dude, it is one of the best. It is one of the best feelings. It's probably what drugs feel like on some, to uh, like some drug feels like that. It is like, you feel so good. You feel so good. Um, yeah. And then after that, just, I don't know, nothing really matched up. Nothing felt as satisfying. I, I really felt like that was the peak of my experience with the game. Uh, let's see. Before then, things that I liked. Um, it was it was somewhat rewarding to learn, the, to feel, actually learn the flow of the combat. It's definitely a game... It want, Dark Souls wants you to play it the game on its terms. It is not like you can't just play it however the hell you want. You definitely have to you have to come to it on some level. And I think once I figured that out, it, it was a much smoother experience. Um, I think it's bullshit that enemies can attack you through fog walls. I can't believe that's still a thing. Like if it was up to me, I would just make it so that as soon as you enter through the fog wall. Uh, every single enemy outside of the boss room will just de-aggro to you, uh, de-aggro from you, and just return to, like, their regular spots. Uh, because there was a couple times where I'd walk through the fucking boss room, and then I would, like, not immediately run out of the way, and I'd get clipped by a fucking big-ass sword or something going through the wall, and I'd start the fight with, like, already a hit take, and it was like, awesome, great. Another thing to make me more salty. 
Um, ooh, my neck. Uh, let's see, other things that I liked. Um, uh, yeah, it looks good. The music's good. Um, I feel like I just felt really neutral towards most of the game. Like, I was pretty lukewarm. I was pretty lukewarm on, on a lot of it. Like, I wasn't having a great time. I wasn't having a bad time. I was just kind of going th through the motions. It was like a long period of figuring it out. Yeah. And it, it's funny because I played so much of it. And I just didn't get that much emotion out of it. I don't know why. I would get, like, annoyed if I died. I'd be like, ah, oh, fucking, you know, normal stuff. Or I'd feel kind of good when I beat something. But I don't know. For the most part, I, I wouldn't say, like, oh, I'm really into this. I was just kind of playing it because I, I feel like I, I, just because I feel like I should, you know? I should have some kind of an opinion on a, on a Souls game. Maybe that was like my tip. Like maybe if I had just played a couple hours of it and bounced off of it, I would or not even bounced off, but just didn't really get much out of it. I would have just dropped it. But but uh, I didn't. I I went much longer and much harder than maybe I should have, and ended up on the other side, not really liking it. Um, so that's my that's my that's my that's my thoughts really. And I'm sure. And okay, here's the thing: is I asked someone like. Are the other Souls games as long? Because I might be able to enjoy one of these games if it was, like, half as long. But, um... Uh, at the, at the current... If they're all like this, I think it's just not made for me. It, it just kind of disagrees with me on kind of a fundamental level. It's not designed in a way that really excites me. Uh, not really the thing that I want to sink my teeth into. I was never really interested. I wasn't interested in the lore. I wasn't interested in, to, like, every other weapon. So, okay, here's the, the thing. I basically, I played with the broadsword the entire game. I didn't realize that apparently there are direct upgrades. I got conflicting information on whether or not there are actual direct upgrades to, like, weapons that are just strictly better than other, than, like, they're the same, same moveset and everything, but they're just strictly better. Someone told... I looked it up. They said no. I asked someone. They said yes. I have no idea what it was. I played brought with Broadsword the entire game because it was the only weapon that I liked. Um, I, I just liked uh, the speed. I liked how much damage it did. It did like an acceptable amount of damage. I liked how it could hit multiple enemies. I just didn't like any of the other weapons. They were either too slow or they didn't do enough damage or they were too linear like the spears. Um... So I pretty much played with one weapon and could every other weapon that I tried, I again, I just didn't like. Um, I didn't try out magic because I know that you have to like totally commit to that from what I understand. So uh, I don't know. I looked up a magic playthrough and it kind of looked like more of the same. Like you get one spell and then you shoot that a bunch of times. Maybe you switch to a different spell, but they're all, like, functionally very similar. Just not really, like, not very interesting options to me. There was nothing that I saw that was like, oh, that looks really cool. That looks like I could, I could use that in an interesting way in a fight. Um, yeah, just, you know, ranged do damage. Uh, yeah, I, I, I don't, yeah, I, I don't expect myself to play any other game in this series perhaps there is another souls like that fixes these problems for me i'm sure someone in the comments is gonna say but it, no but like in bloodborne that it's different you would probably like bloodborne maybe i would i wish i could play it <laughs> i wish i could play it <laughs> um yeah so that's my experience with with D dark souls 3 Probably will not be returning to the series. I think I just don't really like it. I'm lukewarm to negative on it. That's it.